Hi, folks. Hi, Rory. Good evening, Rory. How are you? Very good, thanks. Hope you're all keeping well. Well, Andrea has stuffed her face with pancakes today anyway. <laughs> Not yet. They're cooking downstairs. That's <laughs> where I'm going after this. Me too. <laughs> I need, I have all the ingredients sitting over there. I haven't started making them yet. So that's the first thing on my agenda as soon as we're finished. Good evening, everybody. And you're all very welcome to our session this evening uh, with John Couture. We're very excited to be collaborating with John Couture to bring um, this session to you this evening, hoping that we will encourage and entice you to get involved and to, um, I know they're going to launch their CPD this evening, but also to um, maybe explore a little what subjects this can be linked with and hopefully we can encourage you to get involved. I'm sure you will have seen the um, advertising in the media over the last number of months and the phenomenal success uh, that Junk Couture is um, at the moment and will continue to be, I, I am sure. Uh, my name is Siobhan Kavanagh and I'm joined by my colleague uh, Neve Murray as well from BlackRock Education Centre. And on uh, behalf of the Education Support Centres of Ireland, we'd like to welcome you here this evening. We just want to go through a couple of uh, housekeeping pieces with you. Um, I will be handing over in a couple of minutes to Andrea and Rory from Junk Couture, who will go through the presentation. Um, the presentation is being recorded and we will make that available on the ESCI website um, later on. It may give us just a couple of days to get it, it sorted. The uh, PDF of the PowerPoint slides we will send to all attendees this evening as well. So sometimes in the evening time, maybe some of your colleagues may not have been able to join us, but may be interested and you'll be able to um, share those and the recording with them as well. And uh, also, we will be sending you a certificate of attendance um, just to mention, I mean, you're here this evening voluntarily in your own time, uh, trying to look at ways of, you know, engaging in different ways and improving uh, maybe classroom practice. And I just want to note here the uh, CUSON, the Teaching Council's Framework for Teachers Learning by engaging in this evening, um, along with the other many things that you do, you're engaging in CUSON, which is that Teachers Learning Framework. So I'm just going to uh, stop sharing there now, and I am going to introduce you to Andrea and Rory uh, from Junk Couture, and we hope you enjoy this evening. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, thank you to the ESCI for having us. Um, what I'm going to do is just basically share a bit of a, a bit of a presentation with yourselves, just to introduce myself first. My name is Rory. I am the Senior Vice President of Partnerships at John Couture. I've been with the company now nearly five years. I'm one of the elder statesmen on the team at this stage, um, but I'm joined today by my wonderful colleague, Andrea. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for giving up some time this evening on Pancake Tuesday. I'm sure you're all eager to get back um, and enjoy some of those. My name is Andrea, and I actually took part in Junker Tour in 2014 when I was in school. Um, and I'm now working as the territory manager for Junker Tour in Paris. As well as that, I'm also heavily involved in the education side of Junker Tour. In, 2000, uh, or in 2021, I qualified um, with a Bachelor of Education degree from St. Pat's in Drumcondra. And I think this background um, of participant and um, educator allows me to see um, the programme from a range of perspectives. Um, we've been working really hard over the past year to try to develop more content to, or educational content to support um, teachers implementing and introducing Junkature in the classroom. And the CPD, um, which we are launching tonight, is a perfect example of that. Thank you, Andrea. So, yeah, as Andrea mentioned, what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to be launching. Uh, a CPD course for uh, for you all. It's it's our fourth now that we've launched in the past 18 months. Um, 
this one we're, we're really excited about because we have the support of uh, Ireland's Guide to Waste, mywaste.ie. We'll touch on them now shortly as well. But just to get started, what we'll be talking through today, basically we'll be giving you all an introduction to John Couture. Um, I'll, I'll deliver that and then we'll kind of go through like the key learnings of the program, how it aligns in across different, uh, across different subjects and curriculum. And then we'll launch the CPD. So the whole, whole kind of premise of this session is to assist you and facilitators with how you can access the new resources for the program, but then also how you can get up and running as well. Uh, and taking part, if you've taken part before, you'll know the ins and outs. If you haven't, then we're here to make that easy for you. So, uh, so first of all, what is John Couture? Um, there's lots of, lots of description on this that kind of goes around. A lot of people have thought in the past that it was a transition year program. A lot of people have thought, you know, that it's just a fashion competition, things like this. But basically what we've tried to do since, uh, since COVID set in was try to really define what John Couture is, what it kind of provides provides and then the different elements of it as well so what it is and it's in its essence right now is that it's the world's largest sustainable fashion competition for young people um, our whole mission is being built around how we can empower as many young people as possible how we can inspire them to actually use their minds use their talents and use their creativity to have a positive impact on the planet so in terms of the program itself as, as some of you will know and some of you won't know it's, it's a year-round free education program um, it's open to kids aged 13 to 18 and at the minute we're sitting at the right across Ireland and in different markets as well. Over the past 18 months we've launched into um, five new markets, namely being New York, London, Milan, Paris and the UAE. The great thing about John Couture and I think the, the thing that we've been trying to hone in on quite recently is the fact that it can be integrated not only just as an out of class or as an extracurricular activity, but certainly in class as well. Andrea will touch on this now shortly in terms of the learning outputs and the outcomes. But how, you know, a lot of the work that we've done over the past year is to make sure that it aligns to these different subjects and everything that is involved with them. So what you're starting to find more and more, it's this narrative that, or sorry, the narrative that there was there in terms of being a transition year program, it's now being totally cracked in terms of the sense that you can take part if you're 13 and you're just started first year, or you can do elements of it as part of your Leave and Serve project. There's, there's lots of different pieces to it, and that's something that we want to try and encourage you all to, to look at today, but then also to actually open up and have a think about in terms of that creative side, how you can integrate that in the class with our help, with our resources, and how we can help you get up and running. So the program itself, it focuses is on uh, creativity, which is, which is the obvious side to it, the sustainability side, which is another obvious one, but then the empowerment of young people. We hear all these stories all the time coming through our, um, coming through our community and through our competition of kids that actually find their voice throughout the process. That's something that we love kind of really amplifying because these are all kids. These are all kids that are in classrooms every year. And the great thing about John Couture is that there's new kids every single year. There's new 13-year-olds entering school. There's ones finishing school. So there's always this kind of cycle of young people that are coming through. And a lot of them are searching for this place where they can express themselves. They're searching for a place where they can actually have their voice heard, but then also be able to showcase their talents. You'll see things like on our socials and stuff knocking around in terms of that we call ourselves the, the sport for creative kids that's something you know in, in the way sport would bring social capital or bring opportunity or team building or confidence building or even just national competitions and things to take part in we want John Couture to be that for people that may not necessarily be interested in sport and then what it all culminates in is a, this, this competition so Runs from September right up until May or June. Um, starts off at a local level, regional level, which uh, you, your schools will be taking part in against other schools from your region. Um, the best designs then will get selected for a city final, and then the top 10 designs from that then go on to represent Ireland at the world final of John Couture. Um, so I'm not going to go through all this because there's a lot of stuff there. But um, in terms of what's involved in John Couture, we have more than just this competition, right? So because it runs from September to May and it runs in line with the school year, we have all these different elements that are actively moving with it and constantly on the go. So there's an educational platform. All these resources, we have a number of resources for teachers, but then we also provide these resources for students as well. So things, everything from learning how to stitch, learning how to sew, we have all these in abundance on our platforms. But then at the same time, we have stories of, 
you know, success stories or challenge, um, overcoming challenge stories. We have all these things that are going to be relevant to not only our students, but everybody that kind of features in the Junkature community as well. The word community, you'll hear that knocking around as well throughout this presentation. And that's something that we really, really pride ourselves in, is this community of young people, of young change makers and young, you know, creative minds. I always talk, whenever I'm on these presentations, I always talk about the creative thinking aspect of Junkature. Everybody thinks creatively from the minute they wake up in the morning, be it if you're going to decide what you're having for your breakfast or if you decide what clothes you're wearing for the day. That's creative thinking. What we try to encourage throughout the whole program is the fact that then kids can actually use this creative thinking in the classroom. They can use it across different, uh, across different subjects, but then they can use it outside of school in terms of their day-to-day -day lives as well to actually make an impact. We always talk about these micro-influencers. Everybody looks on Instagram and they see so many things that maybe are, would be deemed as unattainable or you know, unachievable. These massive numbers and people following people and everything. Whereas change can be made on a much more micro level where young people can influence each other by doing certain practices. We want to really encourage that and open up that voice as well throughout this community. And that's how we keep them engaged. We try to give them all different examples of other people their age doing these amazing things. And that's something that we always try to promote. And then when we talk about the international events side to it, so a, a few weeks ago, we, uh, we completed our first ever world final. Um, we brought kids from Ireland, the UK, Italy, France, uh, the States and the UAE to Abu Dhabi for the first ever Junkature world final. Uh, if there's anybody from Longford on the call here, we had two guys from, um, from a school in Longford went on to win and become the first ever Junkature World Designer of the Year. Off the back of that, there's all these amazing opportunities that come for the kids. There's international events like Climate Week, the Cannes Film Festival, COP27, all these amazing events that, you know, sometimes you may not necessarily have access to. That's something we want to try and, you know, add color to whenever we're bringing Junkature to these events. And it's about letting the kids showcase what they've created and what they've made from essentially recycled materials. But on top of that, then there's this uh, the documentary strand, which I'm sure some of you will have seen as well. You'll see a poster there just on the screen saying Wake in the Muse. This is one of a few documentaries that we've commissioned, and it's all about amplifying that student voice throughout the process. And ultimately, then, whenever we bring this all together, it all kind of comes down to these key learnings. Andrea is going to run through these, um, and then we're going to link it into the education side of the company as well. Thanks, Roy. So as Roy mentioned, I think creativity, kind of art is a very obvious um, thing that comes to mind when you see junk couture, when you're looking at a design, hearing about um, a student's experience of junk couture, but there are other aspects um, and links with other subjects that I'd like to highlight now over the next couple of slides. Um, in terms of climate action, we want students to see waste as a raw material so that when they throw something in the bin, that's not the end, that they can use it for something else, uh, whether it's a bottle, reusing that or something really creative. Um, and that brings us on to creative thinking. We have um, students who've used shattered wind, windscreen glass, uh, windscreen wipers, brushes from the car wash. This is the essence of creative thinking. It's wacky. It's wild. It's wonderful. You never thought that you could make um, an amazing creation from these materials. Um, we've also got elements of STEM within creative thinking. And I think when we use STEAM, so when we include the art, it's very obvious. You say, OK, junk chore fits within STEAM because of the art element. But if you look at the science, technology, engineering and maths, junk chore also falls into that. And I'll touch on that um, a little bit later on. In terms of entrepreneurship, we have students who reach out to local businesses, communities um, when they're sourcing their materials. So they might go to a local business and ask them for offcuts of material, plastic waste, whatever it might be. But they have to come up with a plan, identify a suitable business and a strategy for convincing them uh, or pitching to them um, as to why they feel that their materials should be donated. Um, they also must uh, build a social media presence if they if they want to, and um, so they can obtain votes, um, which is another aspect of the program. Interpersonal skills, we've got um, working as a team, conflict resolution that comes with working as a team, and then compromise. We've got uh, up to three students on a team, and they all have big ideas, um, 
they feel very passionately about their inspiration and they have to all come together and then work towards a common goal, which I think is a super learning um, rather than just telling students about conflict resolution. They are living it and they are working through it themselves every day. You can head on to the next. Thank you, Rory. Um, and then through those skills that were mentioned in the previous slide, students who engage with Junkature and indeed teachers who, who implement Junkature in their classrooms support students to become active, self-directed learners, build confidence in their own capabilities and also become more socially conscious global citizens. So they um, experience commitment to a project over a long period of time. They must work independently on it. They must go off and do their research, um, gather information, materials, inspiration. Um, and because Junkashore, as many of our teachers know, there is a lot of time dedicated to Junkashore. It can't all be done in the classroom. The students must take ownership for their design and work on it in their own time. I think just to add to that point as well, um, one of the great things that I've seen certainly in terms of the, the global expansion of Junkashore is a lot of students, or sorry, a lot of schools and a lot of teachers are crying out for student led programs. And what you'll find is that, yes, Junkashore. You have to be the guardian of it. You, as a teacher or a, as a facilitator, you're the person that brings it to the, to the school, and you know you're you're the person that is going to kind of try to encourage the kids to take part. But ultimately, once they get started, what you'll find is that students kind of come out of themselves whenever they're doing that, and they they very much lead their project. And I think that anybody involved over the years will actually see that they'll see these kind of success stories of how the students have directed it themselves how they've kind of developed this real resilience within themselves, but then how they've also brought, be it their friends along, be it their family, family along, or be it their, their, even their classmates along as well. So I feel that the student-centric side to this is a very, very good one, and it's a very good one to kind of amplify as well in the classroom when I try and move that along. Um, now, in terms of subject alignment, um, art, as I mentioned earlier, is the most obvious. We can see exactly how that fits in in terms of the senior cycle. You've got the three strands, research, create and respond. Um, and this is what Junkature is. You're researching your inspiration, designers, um, artists who inspire you, architects who inspire you. Um, you're re researching materials, techniques, different ideas, and then you create. So that is the construction phase, as we call it, where you're putting all the research, all the ideas together to create um, a live product um, and then you've got the response so this is the performance it's where you reflect on the journey uh, reflect on your learnings home economics is another one and we see um, an elevation I would say in the standard of junk tour designs when home, home ec is involved in terms of the skills and techniques um, and it's a great way of bringing to life some of the sewing, crocheting, whatever it might be, even in terms of caring for um, our clothes, which we learn through through home ec. Um, it gives students a greater understanding of how they can care for their, their designs past Junkature, give them an, uh, an extended life past the competition. Um, STEM, this is my, my favorite uh, element. Um, and so if we touch on science, um, the students are working with materials. They are experimenting with materials. They are heating them. They are cooling them. They are preserving orange peel, uh, banana skin. They are they are thinking creatively, thinking scientifically at the same time. Um, technology. They do all of their research using technology. They create these incredible digital mood boards. Um, and we can see their design journey through these mood boards. They submit their design through the Junkature app. Um, they create videos, they tell stories, they get really creative on TikTok. We have seen um, some super videos who've had millions of views this year. Um, and also Capri Sun were getting involved in some. So the, the reach of technology for them um, has huge impact. Engineering. We, uh, we see there was one design this year and um, they wanted to dance in their design. Um, and they were actually a world finalist on point. And these girls went and um, had to source materials that were, that supported the aerodynamics um, of a ballet dancer. So the materials had to be light, they had to be flowing, they added feathers for movement. Um, and then also for maths, 
um, they are measuring, they are using shapes, they are um, thinking way outside the box in terms of maths. They're not sitting down doing algebra, but they are still incorporating maths into every decision they make in terms of length, uh, height, all of these kind of things. So I think STEM, as I said, STEAM, yes, of course, but we can say, oh, that's obvious, tick off the A in STEAM and we have it covered. But STEM is really, really um, important at the moment. And I think that when you see, when someone points out the, the links between Junkature and STEM, it makes it a lot more, um, I suppose, a lot more easy to understand. Business in terms of the marketing of the design, rallying local support, getting onto the local radio in your in your newspaper, as I said, pitching to local businesses for their support, for their materials, their waste, whatever it might be. Um, it's kind of a real social um, action project that students can engage in. DCG and technology. Like Home Ec, um, it raises the standard. It brings a different kind of side to designs. You might see um, students maybe coming in and, and advising, so peer-to-peer -peer learning, or you can see um, a, a teacher from a different department coming in and giving a workshop, delivering a workshop. The students might add a kind of a, a mechanical part to their designs or whatever it might be. We've had designs that open up on the stage and that light up, that do different things. So it's great to see um, cross-departmental, I suppose, collaboration between students as well as teachers. Um, and then English storytelling, we've got lots of descriptive language. Students have the opportunity to first write um, about their design and materials description. And then they go on to tell the story and it builds um, a kind of a, a life. Um, this, the, they tell the story of the life and the, the life cycle of their design and how it came to be. So, um, yeah, you could integrate Junkature into any subject, um, I would think, and especially in the international um, curriculums that we are seeing, um, there's definitely huge scope. And I know in, in terms of Paris, um, schools are doing Junkature as part of subjects that I would never have thought of. So this is kind of bringing to the fore of my mind um, the endless opportunities in terms of curriculum alignment and diverging into other um, areas. Just to pick up on that as well, I think uh, another thing to add to that is that we've began to formalise relationships with the different teachers associations from certain subjects. So obviously we have, we, we have a great relationship with the Art Teachers Association in Ireland, but now we're actually talking with the engineering, with the technology and with the home economics uh, associations as well. And it's really refreshing to actually hear each of them actually agree with us in terms of the, these, key, the, these key learnings and the alignment as well. Um, so what you'll see now in terms of the delivery of Junkature over the next year and the year in the years to follow is that a lot of our program, a lot of our resources and a lot of our educational output will begin to focus more and more on the learning output. And hopefully that will expand our reach even further across subjects and across curriculums. Um, super. And then just on to resources. So as I said, over the past year, we've really started to um, hone in on resources and uh, we want to make Junkature accessible to all. And that means providing all the resources you need to implement Junkature in the classroom. Um, so we've listened to feedback from our community um, and we've built on that. So at the moment, uh, we've got many more resources in the pipeline but what's available at the moment is the handbook so this is like the the guide to everything junkature it goes through um getting started all the way to submission it's got performance it's got the city finals it's got everything in there um, and it's a great resource for um of course the educators students but parents and management as well i think it's a great tool for them to gain more of an understanding of what junk chore is what's going to be involved for the for their child or their student or whatever that might be they've got the starter kit um that you get as soon as you register for the program and this just has all the the key things you need so it's got the timeline checklist again great to share with students so they can track their own learning they can self-assess they can reflect um it's also got um sketching templates um because i know for for myself i'm not much of an artist and that would have put me off having to sketch but when you've got lovely mannequins you can sketch many times you can do them digitally um so they're also a great resource that that students love 
Uh, the timeline I've touched on that brings you from the point of starting. So some schools start in September, others might not start until November. So it, it it's uh, changeable. You can start it in September and it brings you all the way up to submission. Um, and again, you can just check in with that once a week or once a fortnight to make sure that you're you're on the right path. We've got lesson one or lesson uh, lesson plans, volume one, um, and we have got more coming. So these lesson plans are just getting started. It's how to sew, um, how to create a mood board, introduction to junk chore, um, and then there are others coming. So these are great for teachers, I think, who aren't comfortable. So maybe you mightn't know how to sew or you might know how to do the back stitch or the running stitch or whatever it might be that you can use these lesson plans um, and they might give you a little bit of confidence when you're going to, to teach the students. Also, what I usually do is I like to pull out the introduction from one, the development from another. They're great for ideas, great for getting you um, on the right track for starting. We have got master classes and we've also got more in the pipeline. Uh, so we've got how to master classes. Uh, we've got different stories from um, industry professionals. We have how to submit master classes. There are tons of masterclasses on our YouTube channel um, that are for both educators and students. So students can, um, again, take responsibility for their own learning, go onto the YouTube channel, learn a new technique, um, understand how to manipulate coffee pods or whatever it might be, come back into school the next day and show the rest of the class even what they learned. Um, and it's, it's a lovely way of yeah, taking ownership and progressing your learning without having to wait for the educator to, to do every session with you. Um, and Rory, you might just want to touch on Microsoft Flip or have you got that in later? Oh, sure, I'll touch on it here. Um, yeah, so for the first time as well, what we've done is we've just partnered with Microsoft um, as one of our global sponsors. And alongside that, what Microsoft are trying to do is to try to help us with our educational output. So everything that you've you've heard from Andrea here so far has been uh, they're they're all resources which have been developed kind of collaboratively between Junkature and teachers. So that's something as well that we're always trying to kind of bear in mind is that there's teachers that will bring different expertise, there's teachers that will bring different input to our resources. And what we want to do is make these resources as rounded as possible. So that's opened the door for us to actually start using uh, Microsoft Flip. So Microsoft Flip, it's a discussion-led platform where we are going to house all our, you know, all our discussions, all our resources, all our interviews with past students. We're going to have three tabs there. One is going to be how do you get started with Junkature. Uh, the next one then is going to be specifically for Junkature teachers like yourselves, and then one for students as well. So each each of these groups will have specific information and specific resources which are going to be useful to the audience. Um, on that platform as well, what you'll be able to do is and uh, you'll be able to interact with other teachers that are taking part across the world. So you may come to it with a bit of input. You go on, you you lodge your feedback, you you lodge your 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 comments or whatever. And then you can open discussion with people that may be taking part in New York or maybe taking part in Abu Dhabi. It's, it's, a, it's a great way for us to connect and to, you know, to encourage that community piece, but also that sustainability piece as well, because different places will have different approaches to sustainability, different places and different schools will have different approaches to creativity. So what we want to do is try to merge all these together and give as rounded, but as also as inclusive and as diverse a voice to that. So after this as well, I'll just share a link to that. You can go on and you can register, have a look around it. If you find it useful, by all means, um, start start uh, throwing in some comments and some feedback into it as well. Or if there's anything you'd like to see on there, by all means, um, you, you can drop in a message as well and we can do our best to work on that as well. Super. And I also see, Rory, that we have some um, educators here who are longstanding Junkature educators. And if there is anything at any point um, that you think will be helpful, that there is a gap uh, within your classroom in terms of resources, let us know, because that is that is how we um, develop resources. It all starts with feedback from educators um, and creators. So do even throw it into the chat um, or the Q&A if you've got any ideas or anything that you really like, anything that you're not so fond of. Um, it's all helpful and we really appreciate it. Um, 
And now onto the CPG modules. So we have got four CPG modules, our fourth one launching tonight, which is great. Um, our CPG one, I think lots of you will have done at this stage. It's the introduction to Junker Chore. So this is just an overview. It's great for first time educators. And it's also great as a refresher because um, things change every year in Junker Chore, as you know. And it's great just to sit down for 40 minutes and have a quick um, flick back through everything and refresh so then when you're launching the program in your school in September um, you're ready for all of those questions that the students might have for you. CPD 2 onboarding to Junkature we have teacher case studies here um, and stories they provide tips inspiration and then there's also guidelines for uh, or to support idea generation so this is really good it's from educators uh, we're hearing the voice of educators and it's a really a nice um, a nice CPD and it's also building that community feel you get you feel like you get to know other educators in the community. CPD three is junk tour for students and this is um, the student version of CPD two is how I how I refer to it. You've got student case studies so you've got you get to hear from um, students or creators that took part in junk tour before hear their tips and tricks and uh, best advice for other creators who are taking part and um, they've also got performance tips some information on sustainability um, and then also information on awards, which is really what motivates many students. So they'll be interested in that. Um, and then for tonight, we've got CPD4, which is being responsible and being circular. Uh, we're launching this tonight and this is uh, in association with My Waste. So if you just want to pop over to the next one, Rory. Um, so this is our fourth CPD, um, as we said, and this gives us more of a relatable insight into fast fashion. So um, I personally would feel uh, before we created this, I would have felt um, a little bit um, guilty or whatever that I didn't understand fast fashion enough. How could I go in and speak to students about fast fashion wearing a pair of jeans I bought last week, for example. Um, but this CPD really helps. Uh, it delves into fast fashion um, and for me, I felt more confident then talking about it. Um, we discussed the environmental impact of fast fashion, the secondhand uh, or the rise of the secondhand clothing industry, responsible consumption and looking after your garments. So um, we also look at giving clothes a new lease of life, uh, which is like really closely linked with with home economics um, and caring for clothes and um, even understanding the labels on clothes the washing instructions is such a small thing um, but it really helps this whole um, circular economy and um, increasing the longevity of our garments. We also speak to an expert from Gracie Collier. She is from Sp Spice Vintage. Um, some of you may know Gracie or Spice Vintage. Um, I'm sure your students will definitely. So this is an online vintage um, shop. Um, and she is really honest. She says she shares that she was interested in sustainable fashion, not because it was cool or um, as it is now. It was because she couldn't afford um, new clothes um, or the clothes she wanted. So she went with her auntie, I think, when she was 14 to a secondhand shop and found a pair of Levi's jeans and couldn't believe that they were only 10 euro or whatever they were and this then sparked that love for her um, and she's really honest she um, shares a great account of her own personal story and then some super tips um, for us all and also that you can share with students. Great thanks Andy and I think on that uh, on, on that point as well what we've tried to do with this module is to try and put the power in your hands as such in terms of delivering all this this information because as everyone will know and as, as we see every day with John Couture sometimes whenever you bombard people with kind of information and stats and figures and everything else sometimes it doesn't all just lodge with, with, with them the way you would like it to so what we've tried to do with this module is try to give really practical examples of what people can do on a day-to-day -day basis taking it back to that micro influencer role again of the young people involved so what how uh, as, as Andrea said, how they look after their clothes, how they can create like a capsule wardrobe, how they can do all these different things to actually just give their 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 wardrobe and their their fashion, their style a bit of longevity, so they're not you know going through that whole fifty two seasons uh, in, in a year cycle as well. 
What we've done with this module as well, as you'll see there, uh, in association with Maya Waste, Maya Waste have basically backed up um, some of the some of the learning. So all the, all the information in there are all key stats and figures that are from Maya Waste. So Maya Waste themselves, they are they are Ireland's official guide to managing waste. So what you can do there, you can log on to their website. You can find out everything in terms of, you know, how you dispose of your waste. Um, all, all the different kind of waste collection centers, but then how you can actually prevent, how you can prevent waste, how you can reuse. And I think that that kind of dovetails really nicely with what what um, what the CPD is about. And I would definitely recommend it now myself and Andrea, we've watched it a few times. We, we've loaded it up a few times and we were trying to just structure it the right way. And I know myself now, I, I think I've only been doing cold washes in the washing machine since I watched in the CPD. So there's always wee things that you can learn, um, even whenever you're involved in these kind of things day to day. But definitely worth having a look at it, um, having a read through it as well. And you never know, you'll, you'll learn off the back of that too. So so finally, just before we open the floor to questions and stuff, it's it's an exciting program, John Couture. You know, it, it does, it leans on creative thinking entrepreneurship as Andrea mentioned as well the, interper the interpersonal skills in the classroom how can you create these collaborations within your class how can you have teams start bringing different things to the fore you know we're we don't always have the luxury of having maybe three people that are interested in creating and design all come together but what you'll find is a different quality shine through everywhere somebody might love performance somebody might love the build someone might love actually the, the the sketching out and everything so it's about actually blending these young minds together and actually seeing them what they can do with waste um i think with that as well what we always try to encourage is to think innovatively like innovation is this buzzword where you know we hear it in our industry every day it's all be innovative be innovative be innovative but whenever you ask a kid to be innovative they could think of something that you would never even consider in a million years We've different examples of, you know, 10 years ago of people in our community using fruit peel to create leather. We have people that have gone to garages and smashed up, as, as Andrea mentioned, windscreens or wing mirrors and things like that, and taken it and used it to create an amazing headpiece. Like there's all these different things that kind of can be channeled through these young people. So we always want them to look at their materials, look at how they can give them a new use and look at, you know, potentially how they can create something from something that may you know that, that will be discarded or you know might might need a second life and certainly for us that's one of the most exciting things that you see throughout this whole program has all the different examples of that um it allows you to foster the creativity within your classroom um again going back to that point that it's not just this transition year program this is something that you can kick off from september right up until may with all these different learning outputs you can run this in phases um you'll see that whenever you download like a timeline through john couture or a checklist what we try to do is almost guide you through in, in a phase approach so that there's a design phase there's a creation phase and then there's a preparation for a show phase where people then are putting the finishing touches on their design but also then learning how to walk a catwalk or learning you know what timing in terms of their music or their performance and i think year on year on year seeing that number and seeing those kids and seeing the creativity and you know the, their solutions to, to climate to, to the climate crisis and everything through materials and through fashion it's really exciting for us it's really you know it's really amazing to think how creative these young people can be and you guys are the ones then that are going to open the doors for them that way to this program to this platform but then hopefully then to something further once they come through it at the end of it um and then finally all the resources are available upon sign up. Um, they'll help you guide through the program, as Andrea said, and as, as alluded to earlier. This is a collaborative approach, not only in the community, but certainly with ourselves as well. We do not have all the answers in terms of resources, so input what you think would work well. I see some, as Andrea said, I see some teachers' names here on here that are long standing members. Talk to us and tell us what you think would work or what you think might help a new teacher as well. These are all things that we're keen to incorporate, and these are things that we're keen to actually pull together throughout this whole process. So the CPD that we've just launched, that's something that will help you. That's something that might give you a thinking cap on something else in terms of how you approach fashion, but then also in terms of how your students can do it collectively to make that bigger impact as well. So here is our World Designer of the Year. Um, Solomon is one of... Uh, one of two, along with Joshua from Back to the Future. 
Um, I did a I did a photo shoot with him. At one of our new partners were announcing on Friday last week, and kind of got talking to him a little bit about the whole experience and all, and really humble, really modest, and I think like. He, he exemplifies essentially these kids that come through John Couture. You know, he, he, he took part in something. He created this amazing design. His design now has been seen all over the world and it will continue to be seen all over the world. But it was a platform for himself and for Joshua, his teammate, to actually go and express themselves through innovative use of materials. I'm going back to that buzzword. <laughs> through different use of materials, creative, a creative thinking, you know, how you can take an old aerial and use that as part of an outfit. You know, there's there's no stopping the kids once you actually give them a platform. And just to finish up um, before I open the floor to questions, we all see the problem with kids right now, right? They're all stuck on their phones. They're all looking at screens most of the day. But what John Couture presents is an opportunity for them to be sustainable, to be creative, to be present. I think that's a really important one, but then also at the end of it all to be celebrated. So we look forward to hopefully seeing many of you take part. We're, we're open to answering any questions here. Thanks a million for everybody for showing up. And yeah, if there's anything we can help with, um, we'd be delighted to. So thanks for your attention. Thanks for taking time out on, a, on, on Pancake Tuesday. And yeah, it's great talking to you all. Rory, Andrea, that was absolutely brilliant. Um... I suppose uh, my experience as, as a principal I've, I've had um, on the periphery of John Couture watching the students and the teachers involved in it in two schools previously and all the things that you said there, I mean, it, it just ties in with transition year so well in terms of uh, cross-curricular, which is always the thing with transition year, but it really, really, t it really hits that box, ticks that box. Innovation, identity, expression, teamwork, all those soft skills are very hard to measure you know, um, come through when they're involved in a project like this. And I suppose what you've done here in creating the resources that you've created for teachers, because sometimes teachers are nervous of something that's not within their own experience. Uh, and how do I how do I lead it? But you use the perfect word there, Rory, when you said facilitator, because that's what the teacher is in this, because it's coming from their imaginations. And as you say, open the door for them and they will fly with this. And I have seen it. I mean, make an outfit out of an area. You know, there, there's nothing you can say about that, only genius, you know. And I mean, we know that kids now are so much more tuned in with the whole area of sustainability. I'm not even sure they were that tuned in with it back in, in years ago when I was involved in it in the early stages of it. But they're very tuned in now with sustainability, circular economy, recycling, upcycling, fast fashion, you mentioned, Andrea. So that, that is where they're at and they want avenues to create this and you know there's research out there that um young people and irish students you know they they know a lot about climate change and they can tell you you know the effects of carbon dioxide on the atmosphere but then and this is coming from um a pisa study uh when irish students were asked about action they were way down the list we were very high up in terms of knowledge but we were very low down in terms of action you know so they're looking for outlets and they're looking for ways to 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 act and to show and to express their concerns about the environment and sustainability. And of course, it ticks in so nicely with the looking at our school document, the, the, the upgrading of that document in 2022 there, which we call our, our kind of our Bible in schools and the introduction of sustainability and sustainable education as a core value in schools. This is a this is a marvelous way of of, of um, incorporating that. Can I ask? Um, is there is would would working on a on a junk tour project fit in under the personal skill for Gashka, Rory or Andrea? Have, uh, is, does it come in under there? Would you tick that box? As a as a Gashka graduate myself, yeah, it does. Um, yeah, I think the with, with the minimum hours and things like that definitely does um yeah. think what, what we found in the past as well a number a number of students have taken it as as, as, as part of the yeah, as yeah, well because obviously you have the end result as well at the end um to, to actually show and then what we're trying to connect as well and we'll be continue to work on this over the next few years is that kind of work placement opportunity that will come off junkature as well so we're looking at how we can tie in with be it fashion programs be it young designers be it independent you know fashion houses things like that I think like that, that's going to be another thing that we're hoping to be able to provide for maybe someone that is taking the Gashka Award, maybe someone that's in transition year, maybe someone that's looking for a next step after they do junkature, maybe they just get some industry experience as well. So, yeah, 
it's, yeah. it's, it's again it all kind of it all ties in really nicely and it's something that we are trying to foster and continue to kind of build up it, it's absolutely fantastic rory and andrea and just a couple of the questions that are coming in in case some people have to leave early um um there's a couple of ladies like uh what we see now we had somebody looking from new board wants to know what platform can I access the handbook containing the guiding time frame, for instance? And another one that came in a bit earlier was, um, when will the students hear back from the first round? So I'll take the first one. <laughs> uh, in terms of the platform, the platform, you'll be able to access it all on our website probably from tomorrow. So what we've been doing recently is kind of uploading everything onto Flip, onto Microsoft Flip. So you can log on there right away. You can go and access your handbook and everything. Um, we're going to be kind of tidying up our website links. So what we'll do as well with this presentation before the, for the SCI team send it out, we'll insert a couple of links in there as well, that which will have direct to handbook, direct to resources, direct to YouTube, stuff like that. That'll be really useful to get started. Yeah, great idea. And in terms of when will students hear back um, from the first round, Rory, am I right in saying it's going to be this week? It's going to be this week, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be this week. Keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled. And then a question, then, um, can students create a garment that is made from all natural materials or does it have to incorporate general waste? Yeah, so that's a great question. We've obviously talked a lot about waste with uh, my waste, but of course, all natural materials um, is a super idea. We have had, as we said, one made from orange peel. We've had designs made from um, banana fiber. Um, my dress when I took part was called La Laine, which was uh, which is wool in French, um, and it was made from sheep wool. Um, so yes, natural materials are welcome, um, of course. Do you see there? any more questions Sorry. there, Norma? Yeah, just on the Q&A, there's a question. Can any subject teacher try to introduce Jill Couture into the classroom? I think that's a, a, a resounding yes. Most is, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, again, just going back to that point, that you don't have to actually just fit it into your class as such. It has that kind of cross alignment, cross curricular alignment, but also if it's a case where we, we realise some students or some schools sorry, and some teachers don't have the time don't have the time to bring it in but what a teacher can do is bring it to the school as we said it's very student-led so it's about encouraging them on those first steps allowing them to kind of see where the access is in terms of resources and then just being there as a kind of uh someone to lean on then throughout the process as well i think that you know you can take part and really facilitate it there's a question there about gosh could just somebody's computer connection was unstable which part of gosh would it link in with i'd be thinking personal skill yeah personal yeah. skill yeah, personal skill section there. And it'll be an excellent one because there'll be so many skills involved in that. Definitely. And then uh, we something else, anything else in there? You just mentioned, Norma, how Irish students are low down on activity or... Um, action, yeah. Action, action. and um, for the IB, so for the international curriculum, there's a, uh, an element called CAS, which is creativity, activity and service. Um, and they take part in Junkature as part of that. So they obviously create a creativity is self-explanatory activity. They go out and they maybe do a beach cleanup or go to their local park and gather their materials that way. So they're giving back to the community, but also taking for their design. So it's a great idea. And then service. Uh, one of the students from Paris last year actually raffled her design at the end and sold it and then donated all the funds um to charity so it was a lovely kind of uh way for for students to to do more than just create they're they're giving back to the community and to the to the wider um people in need okay there's a question there how many students per outfit three Two. maximum of three and yeah. you can enter solo if you want but maximum of three maximum of three brilliant and alana is saying that she found the youtube masterclass is brilliant just wondering would you be making one? Would you be making one for how to teach students how to safely share their progress on social media platforms? That's something that's in the pipeline as well. Um, obviously, social is such a big, such a big thing in terms of not only our platform but certainly young people's lives. So it is something that we do have in the pipeline for the for the coming months. Is that kind of safe usage, but then also safe sharing as well. Yeah. Can multiple outfits per school be submitted? Absolutely. Multiple teams, multiple outputs for sure. Yeah. Outputs. Competition, I'd imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so in future, what will happen is when people say to you, 
my goodness, you look amazing in that. We won't be saying, well, we got it in Marks and Sparks or Dolce Gabbana. We'll be saying, John Couture. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. Look, we have a Fantastic. number of kids that have come through. Alumni, you know, people that are going on to study fashion and everything else. But again, going back to that point, success for us isn't just those kids. It's success to go and find these kids that find themselves through the process might study something that they want to pursue. Um, that's really the kind of where the success lies for us is that. And then hopefully along the way, you might have one or two designers popping up there as well. Well, that's marvellous. That you Thank you. And is it specifically a transition year programme? No, absolutely no. not. Absolutely not. We're open 13 to 18. You can enter right across the board. You can enter for first year right up to sixth year. Brilliant. Is there a team each year? No. <laughs> the, theme, uh, the theme comes from what, what's in the kid's head, <laughs> what they want to express. You know, that, that's, again, it's one of the, the best parts for me anyway is the stories behind the designs because every single design is a different story. And it's, you know, it could convey something to do with family, friendship. It could convey where they're from, any, you know, their favorite book, their favorite song, whatever. It all just comes down to what the kid wants to kind of get across in the design. So um, I think that's one of the most beautiful parts and most probably holistic parts of the whole process as well. I see another one here. Is there any restriction on using old jewelry or using it as, em uh, as embellishments? No, um, you can uh, reuse or repurpose. Um, so broken jewellery, um, jewellery that is going to be thrown out or whatever is perfect to use, take it apart, give it a new life um, and use it to embellish the designs, of course. There's another one there. It says this year there was a Google form submission as well as the option to use the app. Is this something that will be an option in the future or will it be returning to app only submission? No, we're going to be using the Google form as well, um, just because we're having a few technical difficulties with the app recently. Um, so we want to make sure that everybody has access to taking part. And the Google form was the kind of easiest fix for that. But we are hoping to streamline that and make that better. Um, so hopefully the app will be up and running. And if not, then we'll find a, we'll find a more simplified way to, to enter. Well, that's fantastic. What do you think, Norma? Do you oh, think yourself and myself be... Tripping the light, fantastic with our cult <laughs> John Couture outfits. Well, I've seen it. I've seen it. It's I was at the regional final, and you yeah. mind to be just blown away with the innovation and the creativity and the imaginations, you know, and the confidence and, and yeah. the skills, you know. So it's ju it's just an amazing project. And anything that we can do, obviously, as the Education Support Centres of Ireland, we're only too delighted to do that to be involved in such a wonderful enterprise. It's wonderful. You. You're a credit, really. I no, think, you. Andrew, you started off as little five-year-old. Isn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and even as Norma uh, touched on earlier, the soft skills, which are really difficult to actually assess um, and to, to score, per se. We hear so many teachers and parents as well saying, oh, my God, it's like a different person. My, my child mm -hmm. or my student has just turned into such a confident mm -hmm. uh, person. And I think that the... Juncture makes students feel confident because the focus isn't on them. It's on this design that they have created. So I even felt when I was performing that no one was looking at me it was the design. So I was able to do it. It was like it wasn't it wasn't about me. It was about this creation. And then that allowed me to become more confident and understand that um, people are appreciating of, of things and confidence rather than um, kind of looking at, at you in a negative way. So, yeah, it's really, really good good in terms of um building people's personal skills and confidence and um yeah i suppose to, to wrap up this there's two of the questions there Norma. can you see this okay, how, long how long do students yeah. have to perform how long do students have to perform if they get through to the next round number one and then i suppose really the final question i suppose to wrap up does the model have to be from the competing group of students andrea take it away yeah so the the students um should perform for 40 five seconds um, on the stage so the first 15 seconds would be like an intro video for their design a build up um, and then they perform for 45 seconds and we share the dimensions of the catwalk with them in advance um, so they can rehearse um, at their school um, and th does the model have to be from the competing group of students so yes the model has to be within the group of three so sometimes what we have is we have one solo designer and they bring in a, a model who didn't work on the design so that would be designers plus one plus one model they have to be included in the three well done excellent 
So just I think that that's probably it. Are there any final words you'd like to say to draw this fabulous evening to a close? Just we look forward to the next set of, of, of innovation and design and creation and um, keep up the great work. Thank and we're sure. delighted to be involved and we're delighted to help and support you along the way. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody Thanks, for joining Andrew. us this evening. Yeah. And I haven't had any pancakes yet, no, so I'm <laughs> to them. But um, an excellent and awful lot of thank yous there and very helpful in the whole lot. So well done to Andrea and Rory for your time this evening. And I hope we've inspired uh, more people to become involved. And as I say, huge, uh, hugely beneficial to have that amount of resources available for teachers, because that really will help, you know, because it, as I say, it's not something that it might be within people's realm of, of, of familiarity, but to have that level of resources there is, is wonderful. So loads of thank yous and loads of compliments um, from the audience there. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, thank everybody. You, Bye, Andrea. Bye, Rory. Bye.